Welcome you guys. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a bubble shield shader. This shader not only has this scrolling effect on the outside, but we can also walk inside of it and see this effect as well. Welcome back for another Unity tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be on shader graph. It's an intermediate tutorial, so I'd recommend a little bit of experience with shader graph. So let's open up a new URP project and get started. So we're just going to start out by adding a 3D object here, adding a sphere to the project. This is just um, a baseline URP project that I have right here. So if you want that, you can get that from the description below. But just adding the sphere into the center of the platform here, um, scaling it up a little bit. And then let's create this shaders folder. I'm going to create just a URP lit shader here. It doesn't really matter too much. You can do unlit as well. But yeah, we'll start with lit shader, see how it goes. So let's open up shader graph. Just going to do a quick bit of reorganizing here. Um, let's pull up the blackboard. All right, and then let's create our first property. It's just going to be like our main color property. So, you know, we, we want to make sure this is in HDR mode. That's going to allow us to add in an alpha here and then also some intensity later on. So I'm going to bring this color over into the node editor portion of the shader graph. And then I'm also going to add in this Fresnel effect. The Fresnel effect is really cool. You can do a ton of very interesting effects with it. Let's just multiply this together with our color. And I'm just going to scooch this over a little bit, drag that into our base color. Okay. And then we can kind of group these up and make a little bit room, a little bit of room for one more node here. The last node is just going to be splitting out the, uh, the alpha channel here. And yeah, actually, so we don't have the alpha channel right now in this fragment. So we can go over to the graph settings and we can change that setting right there. And then we can now pull it into the alpha. Okay, so let's just save this asset and we can go check out what we've made so far. We got to pull in the, uh, okay, so we got to make a new material and then we're going to pull that onto our sphere. There we go. Okay, and then once that renders, we see that we have kind of this Fresnel effect happening. Where essentially, like when we're facing the dome, it is more transparent. And we can change the color here. I'm just going to make it like a light blue for now. We'll change this later. All right, so let's go back into the shader graph. We're going to do a few more things here. So we will, let, let's start out with just making a new um, float here. It's just going to be basically the Fresnel intensity or Fresnel power is what I'll call it. Let's pull that into our node editor and we can connect it up with the Fresnel effect. And now this will control the power of the Fresnel effects. So let's go back into our scene view and we can play around with this power. And so as we get to higher uh, Fresnel powers now, you'll see that this effect is amplified and it becomes more amplified towards the edges and you can actually see through it. It's more transparent in the middle now. So something like this um, are some good initial settings. Okay, so the next thing that I want to show is the inside. So first of all, let's let's do the is trigger there. And so now you see like when we walk inside of this this dome, it's we we can't see anything, right? So we're going to actually be playing around with that effect next. I'm just going to really quickly adjust a few of these settings so it looks a little bit better. We can turn up like the intensity and the Fresnel power um maybe a little bit down on that. Okay, so that, that looks better. Um, but the, the next main effect that I want to work on is the inside, you know, being able to view it from the inside. So let's go into shader graph here, add this, um, this alpha parameter or this alpha property. We're going to hook this up to an addition node. Okay. And then what we actually, to demonstrate this, um, first, I'm just going to kind of remove this splitter here. So we're no longer going to drag in the alpha to the final color, um, from our Fresnel effects. But instead, we're going to, you know, add this alpha in on the bottom node here, throw that into the top multiply, and then we're going to take the alpha component from the bottom node. Um, so now what we've done here is we've just basically created in, you know, a, a, a semi-transparent effect. Um, and sorry, I have to actually come back here and we have to change this to 
render both faces. So you can actually render both the inside and the outside face simultaneously. Okay, so now that we're in play mode, we can see the inside is rendering. All right, great. So let's go back into shader graph. Um, I just want to show you guys something real quick. So if we drag this Fresnel effect in there um, and add it, we can see that it's actually affecting the back face. So we definitely, we don't want that. So we're going to delete that. We have to do something that gets a little bit complex here now. So the overall goal is going to be to essentially do a dot product here. We're going to do it with the view direction and then the normal vector. And so what this is going to create is it's basically going to create this effect where when we do the dot product between the two, it will depend on the camera angle. And so in this way, we can get the front face and the back face to react differently. So I'm just going to pull this into a, a clamp now to clamp this value and just kind of continuing on of what I was explaining though, like, Basically what we can do is we can selectively apply the Fresnel effect um, to the back face or the front face. So right, that's what we're working on. And um, I'm just gonna kind of make this into a little bit of a block, call it facing camera to kind of denote that this has to do with the camera facing direction. And then the last thing we can do here is just add in um, a little bit of a, an offset. I find that 0 0.5 works pretty well here. And yeah, we'll do one more node. Okay. Let me just adjust that there. Okay, and then um, just make a little bit of space. And then we're going to do a couple more things here. So we're going to now multiply together this output with the camera with the Fresnel effect. So by multiplying this together, it will selectively apply it. And now we can just add this together with our transparent effect from outside and inside. Okay, so the, you can see the Fresnel effect is working on the outside, and we also, if we go inside, we have that applied effect as well with the transparency. If you're seeing this, congratulations, you've made it to the secret halfway point. You are now eligible for secret benefits, such as being able to subscribe and join the Discord. I know, how kind. But seriously, you guys, I appreciate the support, and let's get back to the video. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is bring in this texture. So I have this in Photoshop here. I'm just showing it with the black background, but make sure you actually export it with the black background off. If you need that texture, it'll be in the description. But we're just going to make a new folder here to store our texture. Going to bring that hexagon grid in. And if you guys want to check the settings, you can here. It should import just fine, but just double check those. Then let's go into shader graph again. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create like a texture node. What this is gonna do is bring in the texture that we just imported into our shader graph. Okay, and then um, the next thing that we can do is we can create like a tiling and offset node. The tiling and offset node is gonna be really useful down the road, but basically we can change the density of the hexagons if we want using this. So. We're going to attach this up to a sample texture 2D LOD node. Uh, also make sure we get this into the UV2 there. There we go. Um, also connected up the texture into that. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to feed this into a lerp node. And what the lerp node is going to do is it's basically going to apply this kind of effect where it slowly interpolates from one value to another. And what I just did there was I actually grabbed the Fresnel effect and I'm bringing this down into an addition node and I'm going to add it to this texture effect that we're uh, currently doing. Um, and so, so what that's going to do basically is it's going to apply the Fresnel effect to this hexagonal texture. And that, that's what we want. So, okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take from the Lerp node, we're going to add it to a multiplier node or we're going to connect it rather. Uh, and then we're going to also connect it with this front facing camera because we, we don't want this Fresnel effect and the hexagonal effect to be taking effect right now inside. Okay. Then the last thing is bringing the multiply node out to an addition node, and we're going to add it to the Fresnel effect. That's basically just going to add both of these new effects together. And now we can see in play mode that, um, yeah, we have this pattern. The pattern is working pretty good. 
Uh, to be honest with you, I don't really like how it looks. I think the density is not high enough. So going back into shader graph, we can easily just change that. And now you can see, I, I think this looks way, way better. Okay, so I'm gonna do just like a little bit of reorganizing while I talk through this next effect real quick. So the next effect is gonna be a scrolling effect where basically the hexagonal grid scrolls from top to bottom. It's gonna look really nice, but we wanna stay organized. So I am grouping up some of these elements. I'm gonna group up this, you know, hex texture. We want to make sure we're really organized because when we get into complex shaders, it can get a little bit scary and overbearing if we're not organizing things in blocks. So I just created a time node and a float. I'm going to create this property wave speed and feed it into the float here. And we can multiply together the time and float. And the float is going to control how quickly the time affects things. So this is gonna affect the scrolling speed in the end here. So from this multiply node, we can bring this out. We're gonna put it into a vector two. This is a little bit subtle. Um, you know, Maybe we don't need to do this, but I'm just doing this to future proof things. We're really only gonna use the Y component here, um, but in a lot of cases, you might wanna use an X component. So we're gonna feed this into a tiling and offset node. And I changed the Y value to eight. It's gonna be more apparent what this Y value actually does in a second. So before I talk about let, that, let's let's just split it out, feed it into this sign node. Okay, so what the Y value does there is it affects the spacing of these bands that you see that is being outputted by the sine wave. So we can kind of control the width of our scrolling effect. All right, so I fed this into a subtract node to just subtract it off. And now you can see the output of that is these kind of thin bands. So that's gonna affect the alpha of our scrolling effects. And we'll have these nice thin hexagonal grid bandings coming through. All right, and the last thing I'm gonna do is just make sure that I clamp this. And I just hooked it up to the addition node. That's gonna add it this entire effect to everything else. And now you can kind of see the output there. It looks like what we want. So we can go over into play mode now. Make sure we set the wave speed to a non-zero value. And there it is. It actually looks really good right out of the box like that. You can play around with these settings if you want. Um, but for now, I, I kind of like this. Okay, so the scrolling effect is occurring on the outside, but not on the inside. And to me, I would like it on the inside just because I think that's going to add a lot of detail. Right now, the inside looks a little bit bland. So let's delete this node and instead take it after the multiply with the camera node. That's basically just going to you know, make it so that the front L effect does not affect us on the inside still. But then we, we just disconnected the camera facing with the scrolling effect. So now the scrolling effect should be present on the inside. And that's exactly what we see. So it looks really great, but right on the top there, you'll notice that it didn't look very good on this mesh. So the next thing that I wanna do is fix this. But before we do that, I'm gonna do a montage of some reorganization. Again, you guys can just skip this if you want. This is just me reorganizing. I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so the shader graph is reorganized. I just wanna talk through these boxes real quick. So the Fresnel effect is boxed up at the top. Then we have the facing camera second then the uh the texture is created there third and then the very bottom is our scrolling effect so those are now all grouped up together okay so we're gonna go in here and work on our last effect i'm gonna call it the z offset effect so let's start with a position node and then i'm gonna take the uh the space of the object not world and this is basically going to give us like the position of the vertices of the mesh um, we're going to split this out and then we are gonna take just the uh, the green component, which is the Y component, that's what we want here. We can put this into an addition node um, if we want to later then add in some type of offset here. Um, you guys can play around with that if you want. I, I find here that like zero is working pretty well. So then I threw this into a remap node. The numbers I just typed in are zero, one, one, and minus one. I played around with those a little bit. Those worked pretty well for me. I'm gonna now multiply it and add it and you can already see in the preview it's 
it looks kind of how we want it to look. The alpha is not as strong towards the top. Okay, so I just grouped those elements up, calling it the Z offset effect. Let's now go into play mode and check this out. Let's see if towards the top, it's no longer showing. Okay, so it's on the sides and if we look up, yeah, it's we don't really see it until it gets towards the bottom. Okay, I played around with a few of the values and this is the final product. And we can also check out the inside scrolling effect. All right, and that is it. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and check out other Unity tutorials on this channel.